Hello, so today we're going to start this warm and cool colored butterfly. And our learning objective is to identify and create artwork using warm and cool colors. We're also creating color emphasis by the butterfly being colored and then the background being, being black and white. So it draws our eye to the butterfly. Even though we have all these crazy lines and patterns across our paper, we still see the butterfly first because it's the only thing that has color. So the way that we're going to start this assignment is you're going to start with a square piece of paper. You need to write your name and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C, and then you're going to fold it in half with your name on the inside. Now I'm going to flip it over and put the fold here. You need to know where your fold is. I'm right-handed, so I like to draw on the right side of my paper. And on one side of your paper, you're going to draw half of a butterfly. So I'm going to draw the head, half of a head, and then the body. And I'm not going to draw it really big because I want my wings to be big. But we're going to look at some pictures of butterflies and different butterflies have different sized wings and different shaped wings. I'm going to do pretty much a standard butterfly here, but you can draw whatever kind of butterfly that interests you. So I'm drawing a small body, but I'm going to do wings that fill the paper. So I'm going to draw my wing that goes up, curves down, and back to about halfway through the, to the body and then the bottom wing is going to curve down. So my butterfly is pretty big. It fills up a lot of the space. And when I drew my butterfly, I'm, um, I made sure to draw by with my pencil pushing hard. Um, if you draw lightly, then go back over your pencil lines uh, pushing hard and making a dark mark. Now you're going to fold your paper with your butterfly on the inside and your name on the outside. So you're just going to fold it and make that crease go the opposite direction. And you can see through the paper where your butterfly is, and you're going to take a wooden ruler. Don't use my plastic rulers, I think they'll break when you do this. So use a wooden ruler, and you're going to rub on top of your pencil lines. So you can see through the paper, you can see where the pencil lines are, and you're going to follow those with your ruler. And use short strokes, hold the ruler down at the bottom close to the paper, and rub back and forth. So that when you open up your paper, it lightly transfers to the other side and then you can draw a perfectly symmetrical butterfly. And remember, symmetry is something that when you cut it in half, it's the same on both sides. So now that I have my butterfly, I'm going to use a marker. And you might want to do this with pencil first. I'm going to skip pencil and go straight to marker. And I'm going to draw this curly Q swirly line across my paper just randomly and I don't want to do a bunch of it I don't want to do tons of little swirls just want to do really big swooping lines and I don't want to get too crazy and do a bunch of stuff a crazy scribbly line so I'm going to start at the edge of my paper and just draw some big swirls they can run off the paper and come back on and that's probably enough you don't want to have a really crazy line. And then I'm going to take my marker and trace over my pencil lines of my butterfly and make sure that you're using a permanent marker and not a black watercolor marker. So if you decide to do the curly Q line in pencil, you'll trace that with your marker as well. So, once you have the curly Q line, you can kind of accidentally lose your butterfly in your vision. And so we want the butterfly to stand out, so that's why we color it in marker. And what I want you to do is um, actually draw a line from the top wing across to the other top wing so that you break up your butterfly in half. And the top half you're going to do either in warm or cool colors, and the bottom half you're going to do in the opposite. So if we go back to my example, I did warm colors on the top half and cool colors on the bottom half. So in this example, I'm going to do the opposite just so I have the example of both. So let's start with the top. So I'm going to start with cool colors. And remember that cool colors are blues, greens, and purples. And in our markers, we have two greens. We have a dark green and a light green. And we have two blues, a dark blue and a light blue, and then we have purple. So you have a bunch of variety, and you're going to color in your butterfly only. So you have to pay close attention to what your butterfly is and what it's not, so you don't accidentally color outside of it. So 
the top half is done in cool colors. And this swirly line breaks the butterfly up into different shapes. So you're going to color each shape in a different color. And as long as you didn't do a crazy curly line, scribbly line across your butterfly to where you have a bazillion tiny little shapes, this shouldn't take you too long to color in. And when you color in with marker, color in solid, and I like to kind of just fill in with the wide part of the marker, this diagonal cut, and just fill in as fast as possible without scribbling back and forth like this with the little part. That takes forever. So you want to make sure you don't step outside the butterfly and color a part that's not the butterfly. Color the background by accident. Okay, so that's the top half of my butterfly. Notice I didn't color outside the butterfly. I had to be real careful not to make that mistake. And so now the bottom half of my butterfly is done in warm colors. Warm colors are yellow, orange, red, and pink. We have more than one pink. We have a light pink and a dark pink. So, and again, pay close attention to stay inside your butterfly. So now my butterfly is completely colored in and the background is left black and white. And it's also broke up into different spaces because of the swirly curly line. So in each one of these background spaces, you're going to fill in with complex pattern. And I have some handouts that have lots of ideas for different complex patterns. There's a whole bunch on this page. And then as you get into the packet, it shows you how to do more of the step-by-step -step of the complex patterns. And you just flip through and find one that you, interests you. The back. And then I also have this packet here that has lots, has nine on each page, front and back, that shows you step by step how to build some of these patterns. And you can just do it with marker, or you can do it in pencil first, um, but you can go straight to marker if you want. And um, just know that if you make any mistakes, you can't erase them. And I would like you to pick patterns, some patterns that have some er element of black to it. So like on this one, then finally the last step is to color in the edges of the flower black. Or like this one doesn't have any colors, any part of it that's colored in black. So you could pick the color that you color in black. I don't want them to just be a standard zigzag line. I want you to make it more complex. So maybe you do a zigzag line, you color every other one in so that you make it a little bit more complex and you stay within that space. And you're going to use black permanent marker for this as well. And then maybe polka dots. But then you're going to add something to them to make them a little bit more interesting. So maybe you circle each polka dot. And you're just going to keep doing this until you fill the space. And each space is going to have a different complex pattern. Until your paper is completely colored with a different pattern in each of the spaces. And when you're finished, you're going to put it in the turning box. Good job, third grade.